Hello everybody, it's Kenneth from the Archives here with another video delving into our collections and looking at an aspect of Dundee's history. Today I'm going to be dipping into the Joseph Johnson Lee collection and specifically looking at some records relating to one of Dundee's MPs, probably Dundee's most famous MP, Winston Churchill. Joseph Lee is today best known as a war poet. A famous fighter writer, he served in the Black Watch, then got a commission in the King's Own Scottish Borderers, at the same time as producing acclaimed war poetry. He was eventually captured and made a prisoner of war, and during that time kept a diary of his captivity, which was then published after the war. And we are lucky to have his original diaries along with his original poetry and many other items in the collection. But Joseph Lee wasn't just a soldier and a poet. He was an accomplished writer in other fields, including writing a play, but he was also a journalist and a very good one in my opinion. As well as that, he was a highly talented artist. And it was these skills that he had combined in pre-war Dundee. Now, you may know that Lee worked for DC Thompson and John Lang, the major Dundee newspaper publishers, but what's less well known is that he also produced his own periodical. The City Echo, which appeared roughly once a month between 1907 and 1912, it was then succeeded by the Piper o' Dundee, Lee resurrecting the name of a famous earlier Dundee publication, and that ran from 1912 to 1913. These both included articles written by Lee, which could range from serious subjects, comic subjects, subjects of a local interest, subjects of a wider interest, the theatre, which was always a great interest of Lee's, uh, and he also illustrated them as well. Um, 1909, he produced The Toxin. That was a journal of a similar format, but specifically aimed at promoting the Labour Party and the Labour movement, and was hailed by such luminaries as the founder of the Labour Party, James Keir Hardy. His work on the City Echo and other journalistic endeavours, of course, brought him into the political arena as a commentator. And we can see here his reporter's pass for an event at the 1910 general election, the second general election, 1910, was one at the start of the year and one at the end of the year, when this is a pass to attend a meeting of Winston Churchill's, because Winston Churchill was one of the MPs for Dundee at the time. Now, the highlight of these publications, to my mind, are his drawings, often under his own name, sometimes under the nom de plume Crocodile. And they varied greatly. They could be comic things. So we've got this one in City Echo in 1909, mocking Dundee's latest fad at the time, which was roller skating. Or they could be on serious topics like this one from the Toxin, looking at the poor law and Sydney Webb through a serious lens. But some of the most interesting ones are the ones he did of the then Dundee MP Churchill. Now, Winston Churchill became MP for Dundee in 1908. Basically, if you don't know, Winston Churchill started his political career as a Conservative, was elected for Oldham in 1900. During the 1900 to 1906 Parliament, he crossed the floor and joined the Liberal Party because he disagreed with the Conservatives over the issue of free trade. He was a supporter at a time when the Conservatives and their Liberal Unionist allies were trying to bring in tariff reform. Uh, so Churchill joined the Liberals. He then, in the 1906 general election, moved to contest a seat in Manchester, which he won. But in 1908, the Prime Minister, Henry Campbell Bannerman, died. Asquith became Prime Minister and a cabinet reshuffle ensued. And Churchill was promoted to cabinet rank as President of the Board of Trade, succeeding his friend and fellow radical Lloyd George. Now, in those days, if you got appointed to cabinet, it was felt your electorate should get a chance to vote on you again. So there's what we call the ministerial by-election. And Churchill was defeated in his Manchester seat. But a vacancy occurred or was created in Dundee, uh, and Churchill came up to contest it and was elected. So this is from the City Echo in Churchill's early days. We've got various faces of Churchill. Now, I think it's fair to say Lee was not a great fan of Churchill's. And we kind of see this there, because we've got one of the things is a delegation from Dundee meeting the member and he's saying jolly jolly to them and as a side jolly bore. In other words, the constituency work doesn't really appeal to him. We see him doing other things and some of this is 
fitting in with the idea that Churchill at the time was a man of action, doing various different things, hand in many different pies. A little political comment here where he's the fireman with the water, it says licensing bill, which he's pouring on the trade. And this refers to one of the first contentious pieces of legislation he had to deal with, which was the Liberal government's licensing bill, which was meeting from severe opposition from brewers. This cartoon in the toxin relates to something that's well known about Churchill um, during his time in Dundee, and that is the antipathy between him and the women's movement, particularly the suffragette movement. Here we see Churchill as a schoolboy patronising the woman who is portrayed as dignified, patting her on the head as if she was a little girl, uh, handling, treating the vote as a dolly, and saying, "Come now, don't be a cry, be a, don't be a, don't cry, be a good little girl, and when you grow up, you'll get the doll right enough." And this reflects the fact that Churchill's attitude towards female suffrage was seen badly, as it was with most of his cabinet colleagues at the time. And Churchill was often a target for suffragette activity in Dundee. This is an interesting one. This comes from 1911, uh, by which time Churchill is really rising up the ranks. After being president of the Board of Trade, he became Home Secretary on to be First Lord of the Admiralty and was really by now a leading figure in the Liberal government. And one of the Liberal government's key priorities at this time is to introduce Home Rule for Ireland. Now this had been a controversial issue in British politics for many years. What we have here is the ghost scene in Hamlet. So if you know Hamlet, there's a scene at the start where old Hamlet comes to see his son, the young Hamlet, in spectral form. The ghost of Hamlet's father in this case is Lord Randolph Churchill. Winston's father. And in 1886, when the Liberals had first attempted to introduce Home Rule, it was Randolph Churchill who was one of the leading Conservative opponents of it, famously saying, Ulster will fight and Ulster will be right, committing the Conservative Party to backing those in Ulster that objected to Home Rule. Now, Randolph's career was not as successful as it could be, but he was still seen as a big political figure. And very often Churchill Jr. was portrayed as being in his shadow. But here we are contrasting Randolph, the champion of unionism, with Winston, who is now come out as a prominent home ruler. Now, Dundee support for Irish home rule was fairly strong and the Dundee Liberal Party had backed it. So it's not surprising from that sense. But to many, it was surprising that Lord Randolph's son should be taking this position. And there was always a little doubt that Winston Churchill was sincere in his views on Home Rule, although that's a subject for debate uh, and we could say a lot on that. But it's quite a nice little cartoon. Here's another one that, that relates to Churchill in Ireland, and this refers to when he went to Belfast in 1912 to speak in favour of Home Rule. Now this was seen as a big thing. There was a lot of opposition in Ulster to Home Rule and Churchill being a prominent supporter of it, a prominent Liberal government minister going over there to support the Home Rule movement was seen as a big thing. It was known he would be shouted at, he would potentially be the target of violence, and some of the Liberal supporting newspapers saw this as a really brave act. Lee is not putting this in quite the same light because we see Churchill's a babe in arms, and it says he is being accompanied to Belfast by his mother and his wife. Well, in actual fact, his mother didn't go with him. If you look at the newspaper reports, she saw him and his wife off at Euston Station when they went to get the train to Stranar to get the boat to Ireland. Um, whether Lee had misunderstood this or whether there'd been an earlier plan for her to go, I'm not sure. But certainly his wife Clementine did go with him uh, and she very often did campaign with him. But what Lee is trying to suggest is he is hiding behind women to defend his policy uh, of home rule, which you can see it being held there. The story of Churchill as Dundee's MP is one we could say a lot about, but we'll um, save that for another video perhaps. Uh, but he would continue as MP for Dundee to 1922. By that time, Lee had returned from the war and had gone down to continue his journalistic career in England. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, and we'll be back with another video soon.